If you have your Bibles, turn with me. Uh, we're going to start in Colossians chapter 3. If you've got a worksheet, there's still some worksheets back there. And uh, it's one of the lessons I wrote that I started writing, and I didn't know when to quit writing. I just kept going, and so I, I'm going to turn this into a two-parter. You're going to get part one tonight. The next Wednesday night, we'll do the second part. Uh, to this message. So uh, we're going to start in Colossians 3. And the title of the lesson tonight is Forgiveness. Uh, forgiveness. And you want to fill in your blanks there. Number one, forgiveness is a command. Forgiveness is a command. And we know what commands are. All right? It's a military term. And uh, we... We know that uh, Christ, you know, many times uh, just said it plain. You know, this, it, this is what you need to do. It really is. Then the second thing is forgiveness is letting hurt go. Letting hurt go. And number three, forgiveness is truly redemption. Forgiveness is truly redemption. You know, everyone that is breathing has been hurt deeply by an action, a harsh word, an unfair treatment, hate, breakups, divorce, false accusations, embarrassments, and manipulations. And folks, you have to understand, people are people, okay? Even, even you know, outside the Christian community, but also inside the Christian community. And I'll say this, if you hang around a church long enough, you're going to get your feelings hurt, all right? You know, it's just the way it is, all right? And I truly believe when it comes to church, people really don't mean to do it, all right? I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt, but it happens, all right? I have I could give you some statements that people have said to me, and I just, my question in my mind was, did they really just say that, okay? So it happens to everyone. Uh, in the secular world, it happens. Uh, you are you get hurt, uh, and you know you can hurt deeply people with words, and that's why it's so important, folks, that we understand. Uh, you know our words have weight to them, and we need to be careful. And we're going to talk about that here in just a little bit. Some people you can talk uh, with and work things out, but others do not care what it did to you and believe that they have done nothing wrong. There is no way they will give an apology. <laughs> I always go back to the old Fonzie days when one time if you saw the deal, he was trying to say I was wrong. I was wrong. You know, he did that two or three times. And, it, and, and I am telling you folks, this will help you. You're not going to get an apology out of some people. It's not going to happen. Okay. And, and, you just, you just have to learn to accept that and realize that, hey, you're a child of God. And, and of course, the second point, let things go. This is where God's forgiveness comes in. Here's the definition, or really my definition of forgiveness. The ability to remove and forget all resentment and attitude against any person or persons that have done you wrong, hurt you regardless of the circumstances. Let me read it again. The ability to, to remove and forget all resentments and attitudes against any person or persons that has done you wrong or hurt you regardless of the circumstances. And again, there are traumatic things that happen to people. And here's the deal. God gives forgiveness. And He gives you the ability to forgive. And when I say forget, I know if it's a traumatized situation, it's hard to forget. But when I say forget, not let that situation rule your life. Okay? And uh, we, we can give things to God and we can ask God, please take these thoughts, p please take these feelings away from me. And it says, I know uh, some of you have just thought that's not going to happen. People have heard us. And I've heard people in every church that I have ever served in saying, I am not going to forgive. 
I'm just not going to do it. And, and it hurts my heart mainly because it hurts that person, the one who will not forgive. It hurts them and their relationship with the Lord. And it says, before you get defensive, please allow me to present what the Bible says about forgiveness. Uh, just hear me out, and I think you can draw your own conclusion. And I'm telling you, you know this, and you know I'm going to get there sooner or later. The best example of forgiveness was Jesus Christ on the cross. Okay, we know what they had done to him. We know in his public ministry and in his life how abused he was and how slandered he was. And they got people to lie against him and all these things. But yet, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Let's look at this. Number one, forgiveness is a command. Therefore, as the elect of God, Folks, every word in the Bible means something. This is saying, since you are a Christian, okay, we are elected. God chose you. You didn't choose God, okay? He chose you. The Bible is very clear on that. And since you are a Christian, holy, again, I know we're not holy all the time, but our goal should be holiness, okay? And be loved. God loves you. Put on tender mercy, okay? And it is so important that we understand these are characteristics, you know, that Jesus has had in his life. And these are, char- these are nine characteristics that we need to have in our own life, okay? It's like the fruits of the Spirit. And I've said this before, of all the fruits of the Spirit, patience is the hardest one to master, okay? But in this case, these are ones that just build on one another. Once you get one of these down, you need to go to the next one. And you need these nine characteristics in your life if you want to be pleasing to God. And again, I'm not talking about perfect. All right? I'm not talking about perfection here. I'm talking about in tune with God, being a loving and a forgiving Christian. Put on tender mercies. And we know what mercy is. God extended mercy to us at the point of salvation. I don't know about you, but I could not live without the grace and the mercy of God in my life. I mean, there's, there, there was times in my Christian life that I didn't do the right thing, but yet God forgave me of those things. Put on tenders mercy, kindness. Folks, it doesn't hurt to be kind, to be nice. Even when someone's not being nice to you, and I, I, I can give you all kinds of instances. I've heard people say, "Well, I'm not letting anybody walk all over me." Well, they're not walking all over you, folks. You have to, it. You know, I've heard even the phrase "kill them with kindness," folks. There's some truth there. We as Christians need to be kind, humility, be humble. We need to be quick to say. I was wrong. I was wrong. Please forgive me. Humble, all right? And, and again, that's hard for some people to do. Meekness. Meekness is not weakness, folks. Meekness is control, all right? It is controlling. It's, it's not having to get the last word in. It's not wanting to get even, all right? And we're going to talk about that. Long-suffering, patience. I've already mentioned, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. Bearing with one another. That means uh, not just being patient, but it, it's giving people the benefit of the doubt. Matter of fact, when you think about it, you know, the disciples were talking amongst themselves, and one of them spoke up and said, Well, Jesus, how many times do we have to forgive somebody? And Jesus looked at him, and you remember what he's 70 times 7. And you do the math there, 490 times. Folks, I know people that if I if I really I really think each time somebody hurt them, they're writing these down and they're trying to get to 490. 490. And folks, that's not what it means. Okay. It means uh, you know, 
realizing that if somebody genuinely asks for forgiveness, you need to forgive them. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also, what are those next two words, must do. What does that make that? It makes it a command. And folks, I know this is one of the hardest things. I, 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 I mean, I almost want to preach this once a year because I've seen more hurt, I've seen more pain, I've seen more people, uh, you know, and I'm talking good Christian people do the wrong thing. I'll never forget in Lawton, Oklahoma, I, I was asked to do a gravesite out there. And it was, it was a, a member of our church. And he basically, and I'm, I'm shortening the story, but he, he basically had not talked to his dad in 22 years. But yet he wanted me to do his gravesite, which I did. And, you know, I talked and spoke on forgiveness there. And the last thing that this guy did when I said amen, was he went and put himself on the casket and weep. I, I'm telling you, I don't know that I've ever heard anyone wail and weep. I'm, I mean, I'm almost tearing up. And this, this happened 25 years ago. And it was because he never let that go. There was a situation between the father and the son, and he would not let it go. And I had advised him more than once to do that. And you can see the pain. And, I, and to hear that, it was just, it was unbelievable. Verse 14, but, of all, but above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. What does the Bible tell us, First John? God is love. God is love. We need to love people the way God loves people. Okay? Man, he loves us with an everlasting love. He forgives us. He has unconditional love for us. So we need to do our best to forgive others. And the word perfection there, again, it's not sinlessness. It's what, it's what I would call Christian maturity. The mature Christian will love in spite of of what someone does to them. Then it says, uh, and let the peace of God rule in your heart to which you were called, which you were called into one body. And folks, we cannot have the peace of God in our life if we haven't forgiven. Number one, it's a command. And then we lack peace when we cannot forgive. And here's the deal, folks. You can't affect, you, you can't, you can't help I mean, what somebody else say, says or someone else's reaction, you can't change that person. Only God can change them. But I am telling you, if you will do the right thing, it will help immensely. Maybe not right when you want it to happen, because we're all in this instant stuff. We want things done, and we want it done right now. Sometimes God has to use other circumstances to help us to understand Man, I need to forgive that person. I need to forgive them. And it says, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, which you were called into one body. Be thankful and let the word of Christ dwell in you richly with all wisdom, teaching, admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Folks, I'm telling you, I, I challenge you, if you've never done this, to do a, a word study on forgiveness. To look up, get you Strong's Concordance, concordance and you get, look up every word, every verse in the Bible that has forgiveness in there. And you will see love in those verses. You will see God in those verses. And you will see these characteristics that, they ha- that we have right here. Now notice verse 17. And whatever you do, okay, and that's, that's a broad scope. That's a broad scope. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through them. Folks, 
Not forgiving hurts our testimony. It hurts our Christian witness. It hurts our walk with God. It hurts others. And here's here's a true statement, folks. Hurt people hurt people. Hurt people hurt people. And you just have to understand that was purposeful. They said it. They meant it and all that. And I am not going to do the same. I'm just not going to go there. And I really believe that we make the mistake of not forgiving. And what God just says, until you take care of this, it's not going to be all right. All right? And I'm not saying, please, I am not saying it. If you'll do it, boom, everything, it'll all, it'll all work out. I'm just telling you, sometimes God has to work on somebody for years to get them to be where they need to be in a relationship. So forgiveness is a command. Matthew chapter 6. We'll get Matthew 6. Go with me if you would. And we call this the Lord's Prayer, but I personally like to call it uh, the model prayer because. The disciples was asking Jesus, how should we pray? And you know this. We quoted it at our candlelight service, but I want you to see the end of the prayer, which nobody quote. All right? In this manner, therefore pray, our Father in heaven. And we know who our Father is. We know what he's about. We know the characteristics of our Father. Hallowed be thy name. I think the words, and, I, and I've heard it a few times, and, and I'm telling you, when, I, when I've heard this phrase, maybe three or four times in my life, there's a situation, and I, I'm not even a part of this situation. I just happen to be there. And then in one person, something happens, and they look at the other person, and they say this, I thought you were a Christian. Wow. Folks, I, they, they should know that I'm a Christian. Okay, and I'm just telling you, because here's what we do. We check boxes. Okay, I don't lose my temper. Okay, I don't, do this. I don't do this. And then when we get to forgiveness, we just stop. Okay? And folks, I'm just telling you, lack of forgiveness hurts your walk with the Father. Number 10, verse 10, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I, folks, when it comes to God's will, I know it's God's will to forgive. I don't even have to, I don't even have to think about that. I know it's God's will. Give us this day our daily bread. And again, you know, I don't think he's talking about food there. He's talking about the word of God. Okay. Man, I I hope you are reading the word of God first thing in the morning. I've said this and said this for years. You know, when I started meeting God in the mornings and then do it again before I go to bed, there's just something that happens there. You're getting nourishment twice a day. And, in, and truthfully, it wouldn't hurt to have some nourishment in the, in the middle, middle of your day also. And it says, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And folks, we know what it is. For someone to, you know, I could go to the, uh, you know, to the Gospels and talk about the, the guy that had a debt and the debt was forgiven and, you know, you know, and then he turns around and doesn't forgive somebody else. All right. And I mean, Jesus chides for what, for his action. Okay. But folks, we have all needed forgiveness. If you sit there and say, oh, I, I've never needed forgiveness, I'm, I'm just going to say, well, you must not talk to many people. Uh, you know, we all need not only God's forgiveness, but other people's forgiveness also. And do not lead us into temptation. And the temptation out there, let me tell you what the temptation in, in, in not forgiven is. Okay? It's justification. They did this, so I'm going to do this. In our own minds, we justify ignoring them, doing what they do to you. Okay? And it says, but deliver us from the evil one. 
I believe with all my heart, Satan has a field day with the lack of forgiveness. Because it affects everything about you. It affects that. And it says, yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Think about this. For yours is the kingdom. It's God's kingdom. It's his world that we are living in. And the power. And here's why I say you can forgive anyone. You have the Holy Spirit power inside of you. Now think about this, folks. We are talking about the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Man, that's power. It's that we don't choose to forget. Okay? And again, folks, I'm telling you, almost every time I have preached this sermon, somebody has come up to me sometime in the next week and say, but you don't know, and then I hear a story. What is that? It's justification. They hurt me so bad. They hurt me so bad that I will never forgive them. And again, you have the choice to do that. But I'm telling you, when you look at all the places that Jesus and all the in just the two weeks that we're gonna that we're gonna look at this, it is a big deal to Jesus. And folks, it it affects every relationship there is, every like parent to kid relationship. Okay, and again, you know, uh, I know our kids, uh, you know, have to make their own choices. When I get older, they make dumb choices, but I go back to those things. That words, words hurt folks. Words hurt, and what we say to our children, it affects them. What we say to our grandchildren, okay, it, it's very important. We have the Holy Spirit power to lead us and to guide us. Remember, remember what your granny used to tell you: if you don't have something nice to say, don't say nothing at all. And folks, it's hard. It's hard, all right? I am a known talker. <laughs> One thing that I drove my dad crazy with, and I, I, I struggle sometimes with it, getting the last word in. You don't, you don't have to do that. I am learning. I am working on that. Now, here's the part that I want you to see. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Now, this is Jesus, but if you do not forgive men of their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Think about that. What does Psalm 55, 18 say? If I regard iniquity in my heart, God doesn't hear me. Look it up. And if I have made peace with this sin, and if I have justified in its life. I'm not saying you won't get an answered prayer. I'm just saying you are not going to be as effective if you could, as, as you could be if you would take care of it. And I go back to say what I said before, folks. We've all been hurt. We've all been hurt. I mean, I've told you just bits and pieces of when I was a youth minister and I got accused of something that I no way it did. And folks, I am telling you, I almost quit the ministry because I was young and I was so hurt by what happened. And they were questioning my character and they were questioning who I was and what I did. And it hurt deeply. And I did. I offered the pastor of Cameron Baptist Church my resignation. He said, no way. I know you did not do this. And we're going to get through it. Folks, so you have to understand it is better to forgive. And then Matthew chapter 5. Man, it gets tough here. <laughs> I'm just telling you. And we know in Matthew chapter 5, basically Jesus has seven illustrations here that it, he, it says the world tells you this, but here's what I tell you. Okay, and, and it's just straightforward, folks. And it's hard to live there. I, I, again, I've had people. It's not that they argue with me. 
because they know I'm right, not because I know I'm right, because I'm reading from the Word of God. They know what I'm saying is right, but they're not going to do it, okay? Matthew 5, verse 43, you have heard it said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. <laughs> well, who said that? That wasn't Jesus saying it. He's saying you have heard this said. Okay? I'm not saying it, and you'll know for sure here in just a few verses that he is not saying that. Who says that? The world. The world tells you that. Okay? And folks, it, it's like loving people. You know, uh, we pick and choose who we want to love and who, who, who we don't want to love. We love some people, love, and, and it's human nature. But when it comes to hate, folks, we've crossed the line. Okay, we have crossed the line when it comes to hate. All right? Verse 44, but I say to you, love your enemies. Are you serious? Love your enemies. You know what I found out? And you try it. You cannot pray for somebody that is an enemy and hate them. You cannot sincerely pray and somebody hate them. And, and you hate them. Because when you get serious about this, folks, you have to make this a thing of prayer. You have to give it to the Lord, and we'll talk about that later. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you. Jesus, you really want me to bless them? You want me to say, hey, it's okay. Let me ask you this, and I know you know the answer to it. But what does it matter what somebody else says about you when you know what God knows about you? It's not that I don't care what you think. It simply means that maybe what you think isn't right, and I want to please my Heavenly Father. My job on this earth is not to please mankind. It's to please God. And I am pleasing God according to this when I can bless my enemy when I sincerely get on my face before God and just say, I, I don't know why this happened. I don't know why this is going on. But, but I, I just, I'm going to let it go. God, I'm giving it to you. I'm not going to let this occupy my, my mind. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Folks, <laughs> that's tough stuff. That is tough stuff, but it can be done. What does my Bible say? With God, all things are possible. And folks, it's kind of like even in, you know, I get under conviction, you know, a lot sometimes. And sometimes when we're pointing that finger at somebody else, what is it? There's three pointing right back at us. And sometimes God even does that. He even tells me. You're, you're, you're kind of upset about this, but what about what you did the other day? Folks, I'm telling you, there's nothing better than, than forgiving people and letting go. Because they occupy, and, and I believe this with all my heart, folks, there are times that we're laying in bed and we're just mad about something. We're just mad. We go to bed mad. Okay? All right? And you know what that person is that you're mad? You know what they're doing? Just sleeping away like a baby. Does that seem fair? <laughs> God ain't, you know, he's not unfair, but I'm simply saying, again, we justify everything we do. I have to do my part, and I've got to trust that God will do his part. Okay, and again, the, the biggest problem we have is with answered prayer. The biggest problem most Christians have. Yes, you can have it right now. No, you can't have it. And we're like, but I want it. <laughs> but I want you to answer it this way. We literally tell God what we want or what, what we feel like. Folks, that's not what the Lord prayer says. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. And the third thing is, he will say, wait. And we are not good waiters. I've never waited on tables in my life. I don't think I would be good at it probably. But we are not good waiters. 
We take uh, no, we take weight as a no, and we just, we just almost throw in the towel on some things. Now look what it says, that you may be the sons of your Father in heaven, for he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and he sends rain on the just and the unjust. What's he saying? He'll take care of it, okay? He'll take care of it. You don't have to worry about it. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? It's hard for me to believe, honestly, to know who Jesus is and to know what Jesus was about and realize that people hated him. What was he all about? He was about love. What did he do? He helped people. What did he do? He healed people. What did he do? He gave his life on the cross. He sacrificed his life. That's how much he loves us. But there were still people. And when you think about unfair, are you kidding me? Give us Barabbas? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just ridiculous when you think of logically how we are. And I am telling you, if somehow the Christian community could get this thing of forgiveness together, I think it would make a huge Different difference in this world today. If somewhere we could get this right, and I understand that not everybody's going to get this right, but I'm saying I believe this sin that we have, this lack of forgiveness, hurts the, the Christian community, and it hurts our personal walk with the Lord. The just and the unjust. What is... What does the Bible say? Vengeance is what? Mine, thus saith the Lord. Man, give it, to the, give it to God, and we'll talk about that next week. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. And again, I know, I know it sounds hard tonight, but folks, if you, if you have walked in my shoes, if you had seen, if you had been in counseling situations that I have been in, I'm just telling you, the hate and the, the drawing the lines and, and all these things I'm not going to do. And I, I'm just telling you, we need to learn to forgive, to forgive. And he's basically saying the tax collectors, that's what they do. Okay, they don't forgive. All right? And if you greet brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so. And basically, he is saying, we are just like the world when we will not forget. We're just like the world. Therefore, you shall be perfect. <laughs> Folks, I understand. We're not going to be perfect till we get to heaven. All right? When you get to heaven, you're not going to have an option there, <laughs> okay? Because the heaven is a perfect place. It is a perfect place. And just as your Father in heaven is perf uh, perfect. And Folks, a goal of every Christian should be Christian maturity. Perfection is maturity, okay? And the bigger person, okay, the bigger person is the one that will just say, when somebody asks for our forgiveness, we'll say, yes, yes, I forgive you. And we need to extend uh, that forgiveness to others. There's a book that I had mentioned. It's been a long time ago, and, uh, I, I really thought, as far as uh, forgiveness, uh, it's probably one of the best books uh, that I have read. It's forgiving what you cannot, what you can't forget. If you want to write this down, okay. If you want to write this down, it's a good read. It's not a hard read. It's not a long book, uh, but there were life situations, and it's by Lisa uh, Turnkirst, L Y S A. If you want to look for the author, T-E-R-K-E-U-R-S-T. -E -E and folks, sometimes these things, this, this pain and hurt that we have and that we have pinned up inside of us, all right, keeps us from the walk with Christ that we need in our life. And we'll pick up there for next week. Father, thank you for the day. And God, it's just so hard for people. God, I know there's human nature. I know, uh, I know it's 
just hard sometimes. People just say the, sometimes it's rude. Sometimes it's cutting. Sometimes it's aimed. They're, they, they've calculated it. They've planned it. And God, I pray that we will not be caught off guard. God, I pray that they, they will not just devastate us, God. I pray that we can understand that uh, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Lord, we wrestle against principalities and powers and darkness and evil and angels, evil angels and, Lord, uh, demons. God, that's who we're wrestling with. And God, I pray and, you know, I, I just think of Jacob and his wrestling that he was done. Sometimes God just has to break us. He has to break us for us to understand how important things are in our life. So, God, I pray that uh, if there's even just anyone here tonight or even out there tonight, uh, God, that you would just let this uh, lesson just permeate their heart. God, I pray that they wouldn't be upset about it, Lord, but they would just really uh, let it seep into their heart and into their mind. God, I pray that uh, they would just uh, do that uh, you know, that word search on forgiveness. And God, I pray, and God, it just frees you up. And God, I know even in my younger Christian life, there was, there's been some things that just hurt me deeply. And it, it took a while for, for me to figure out I'm not helping anybody by resenting someone. So God, I pray that as we keep studying, as we look at this, that you will just help us with this thing called forgiveness. And God, you know, uh, maybe we're all right with God in this area. I, I just think that would be great. But God, uh, we can use this scripture. Oh, Lord, part of Wednesday night is, is learning and discipling and having the scripture available that we can help others who are hurting. God, this world is hurting. God, relationships are hurting. Marriages are hurting. Uh, boss and employees all these relationships are hurting. And a lot of times it's because we just won't forgive one another. So God, I pray that you help us to see the seriousness of this. And God, I pray that we will correct it, God. Only we can correct it. I don't think just one lesson on it's going to correct it. I think we have to do business with you. With you. I have to think that we have to be honest with you. And God, I pray that we can be like you, God. I want to be like you. God, I want to be able to say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And God, help us not to be discouraged by those words, God. Help us to understand that it can literally free us up. Free us up. So God, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you for this time together. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.